Okay, here we have a Velodyne. This is the ULD 18S3 model. Oh, what year is that? I don't know, 1999, right around there. Anyways, you can see the, uh, the foam has rotted, and I'm replacing it. What I got to replace it is this. Ta-da! And it's a, uh, it's not foam. It's, uh, I'm not sure if you can see through that or not. It's a fiber, and it will be rubberized once it's installed. Um, I got this. I specced it and got it from, oh, I called them and got it. We got some dimensions. So these are impossible to get replacement rubber foam for these. What Velodyne will do is put you another uh, cone in here for around $1,300, $1,500, or you just buy a new 18-inch um, Velodyne subwoofer for around six, dollars $7,000. Yeah, it's just not worth it. Um, I got this from, give them a little precursory, Midwest Speaker Repair. You can go to MidwestSpeaker.com. And uh, but that's where I got it, and we'll see how it works. The first thing I've done so far is I've got a uh, gasket scraper, and I used it to chisel up the cosmetic. These pieces are strictly cosmetic, and I chiseled them up. And as you see, you leave some of the stuff on here, but and the bottom looks all chewed up. But they're just for cosmetics, and I'm going to glue them back like that when I'm done, so it'll all look look like new when I'm done. So I've chiseled those up. I've just begun peeling up this edge foam to the screws and it's peeling up really nicely. It's got like a glue on there. So anyway, I will continue on with that. And we'll see how this turns out. Now when when removing these screws, so you can get this, it's pulling up. It's fairly warm today so that helps. You might have to get a hair dryer and warm it up a little bit but it's pretty warm so I'm able to pull this up pretty easy and when I have a tough spot I can use my gasket scraper but you've got to remove these screws because they put in the, the foam and then they put the screws and flat washers on top of the foam so if you want to pull the foam out you've got to remove these screws now the back of these screws is a jam nut that's jammed up into the MDF so when you remove these screws do not, do not push down real hard. You just want enough pressure to unscrew the screw. You don't want to push down excessively because you'll push that jam nut out of the MDF and then it will spin on the end of your screw and now you got a problem. You won't be able to get the screw out. You'll have to get a cutting wheel and cut the screw and then remove the subwoofer, which I do not want to do. This is a Velodyne 18 inch subwoofer. These are not ordinary subwoofers. These are dual voice coil subs and it's got a servo controlled motor and a an accelerometer and a feedback circuit and this is a rather sophisticated subwoofer. There's no exhaust ports on here. It's a sealed sub which I'm sure is one of the reasons they sound so good. There's not a whole lot of travel or free air resonance associated with these subs because they're sealed units. So you can use a low travel foam or cloth or whatever on these and they'll work fantastic. But that's one of the properties of the Velodyne and why they sound so good is they, they're just a good tight base about them. and. Uh, gosh, you'll pay as much just to have this this part replaced, 12 1300 bucks as you'll pay for other guys' complete subwoofers. So there's a reason for that. These Velodynes are, uh, are the best. They just are, but they are expensive. But anyway, let me get back to work here. But you see what I'm doing, and I'm just getting this up for now. And then I'm going to vacuum, and, and then I'm going to clean this rim here. And then we're going to use... Uh, on the fabric material there you just use your standard glue as though you were gluing foam and then you let it dry and cure and then the next day 
you come in with the uh, latex rubber and paint it over all the cloth and let that cure for a day and then you're done and then we'll glue these trim beauty rings back on if that's what you want to, want to call them anyway let me get back to okay, work now I didn't show it but I went ahead and dug out the rest of this foam as I before I pulled on more of that and that's to keep it from falling down into the speaker because eventually we're gonna have this done and we're gonna flip it over and you don't want the pieces to come and lay on the back of your sub and vibrate so I'm gonna take the vacuum now and I'm even gonna vacuum this and uh, pull the rest of that off with the vacuum cleaner you can see a couple little pieces are down here in the center also I'm gonna have a my, uh, a friend in this case it's my son he's going to vacuum as I take my exacto knife and clean this this edging up here and if you look behind here I'm not sure if you can see it but they do use a cloth suspension here for the center cone around the coil and why they didn't use that same material out here is beyond me. It's, it's obviously good enough to handle the suspension right there in the center where the power is actually administered. But they don't use it here. And of course, the foam rots, and there you go. But we've got a cloth or a fiber one now, so this should work great. Well, let me get back to work here. As you can see, um, oh, before I pause here, as you'll see, I do leave, I remove the screws, go past them, I put one or two, in this case I've got one, two, three, I've got three left in there to keep things nice and solid. So the next thing to do is to finish cleaning this up, and then we'll glue in the new uh, suspension, the new suspenders there. Um, oh yeah, sometimes, uh, the center cone here, if it's cloth, typically you can't cut it and put shims in there. If it's paper, typically you can. In this case, this one's paper, so I bet you could cut that and put your shims in, but since this is a dual voice coil, and I've never been into one of those, I don't know what it looks like in there, and I've had good luck replacing foams without doing that and shimming them. I just kind of glue things and center it and press and go and press and go as I do and test it as I go until it's centered and I can tell it's centered perfectly and then I go ahead and cure it with a hair dryer um, that's been working really well for me so that's my methodology I'm going to use on this one I just I mean if I screw up the fabric thing I can always remove it and try it again if I cut into here and I hit a voice coil wire because it's a dual I've never been in here if I had one to experiment with I would but I don't so I'm not cutting him open to shim him so and then and I know it'll work fine without doing that it's just a little bit harder to do the shims will kind of spoil you but even at that when you're done you got to put the flap back on and then seal that again too so that's kind of a hassle so six one way half a dozen the other on my particular case I'm not cutting that so let me get back to work here okay using an exacto knife and a vacuum cleaner you just kind of see if I can focus you can see how you, you just scrape it off like that and and that's what you've got after I've done all that so it's all in the prep work and as you can see she moves in and out okay that's how she looks all cleaned up so now we can position this cloth foam they sent me and if it goes Oh, that fits really nice. Wow. It looks like it's going to, if it goes over my screw holes, I may have to remove all the screws, but it doesn't look like it's going to. So, that's a really nice looking cloth foam. It's like a two-stage travel kind of thing here. One here and another one. It's going to be sweet. So I may remove all the screws, and uh, so I've only got three in, three still left in there. Boy, I'd be afraid to get glue down in my my holes down there. Um, and it looks like it doesn't really override the screws when it's in there. So maybe I'll just put all the screws back in, and then glue this back in. That's what I'll do. Okay, for this fabric. You need to uh, use a lot of it because as you put it down, it 
squishes through the pores or the, the valence in the fabric makes an excellent seal. As you can see I've got good suspension with no noise at all so it's good and centered. And you have to use your finger and wipe all the way around uh, both seams to make sure you get a good seam and then you have to do it while it's really wet because once the glue starts to dry and it sticks to your fingers and it sticks to the fabric so you need to do all that and then it it appears to to uh, seal itself nicely lay down because of the pores um, it just it lays in there really nice wow this is awesome okay <coughs> excuse me we'll just let this dry for a few hours once this glue clears, dries clear, I'll know it's dry, and then I'll go ahead and get the brush out. There's the, the brush and the, the latex, and we'll brush all the latex into this fabric and rubberize it, and we should be good to go. So we should be able to test Oh, within the next, I would give it probably 48 hours to cure. Once we brush all the latex on there, I give it 48 hours to cure. We'll give this about four or five hours for all this glue to cure. I've got my little hair dryer down here, low heat, and then that'll let it cure really fast. And then I'll do my latex and just let it cure overnight, and we'll see how it goes tomorrow. Well, this is how she looks now. I put one coat of the uh, latex on. And you know, I really think the latex is, uh, as you can see on my fingers, the glue is a rubbery latex. So I'm thinking that this latex is just a watered down version of the latex glue. Just guessing. Guess I could find out. But anyway, I'm using the supplied latex. Uh, two thin coatings is better than one thick one, so I put on my first thin coating, and we'll give it a few hours to dry, and then we'll put one more on there, and once she gets all dried, we'll power up and get her tested. I can tell she's sealed already, because when you push, it's really tight now, so there's no, no leaks. So, well, we'll let this dry and put on one more coat, and then... And uh, we'll get it tested, and if it tests out good, we'll stick those beauty rings back on. Okay, there you have it. Oh, if you want to know who to contact at uh, Midwest Speaker Repair, that's uh, www.midwestspeaker.com. And uh, for you Velodyne guys out there, his name is Theo. And... Uh, my name's Grady Howell, so you can mention my name in uh, Colorado. He's the one that we specced all this out. So we did a lot of work for you guys with the uh, Velodynes that need a replacement for your 18-inch. I mean, it's impossible to find, and Theo sourced this for me. And uh, he knows what he's doing, and so that should help you guys out, because I certainly was looking for help on the Internet couldn't find any. I called Velodyne and they just, we don't have anything. They said call Orange County Speaker or somebody in California and they're like, no, we don't have any 18s. You're out of luck. And then when I went on the forums and stuff, I was just reading where one guy had to have his repaired by somebody and then another guy said he replaced just the sub with another one and just, just wasn't looking good. And then I got a hold of Theo here from uh, Midwest Speaker Repair and he sourced it. He got me what I needed and this is working beautifully so far but we still got to get it tested so maybe on the next clip we'll be getting her powered up and tested so but so far so good I can just tell already it's going together nice. Okay, I ran a bead around there I'm smearing it in with my finger and now I'm doing it on the lip here and this is the the glue this is not the the latex. Well, you want to use a good amount. You wanna, and you're going to go on both surfaces, which means once I'm done here. There we go. 
on this I really worked it in well on the fiber and on the metal so then you go to this and it installs like this so flip it over I'm gonna run a bead on uh, I'm trying to film and do this I'm gonna run a bead here where it's gonna match up and a bead here all the way around and massage it in with my okay finger. there we go I have my use my brush I use my glue it's not glue it's a latex rubberized sealer and I put on my second coat and you can see I kind of started here it's drying already and then it gets a little wider as we go all the way around to here so we'll just let this cure overnight and give her a test tomorrow I called Theo uh, and spoke to him at Midwest speaker they're up in uh, Minnesota by the way and he assured me that that's not he said it's similar to glue but it's really not it's got some ester ester polymers or something in it so it is different than the glue so anyway and they provide that with the, the fabric so there you have it we'll just uh, let it cure and then get her tested so let's see how this goes this is exciting okay and I went ahead and glued these back on now and yep it's looking good I think now is a good time to test it let's go over here switch this on subwoofers on let's get something going play in here what else have we got in here let's go to disc 2 Want something with some bass. I'm finishing up my uh Fantastic, there you go.